Good afternoon and welcome to BIC Gardener's Office Hours. My name is John Kowalski. I'm part of the marketing team here at BIC. And uh, today's presentation will be on transmission haze and clarity for coatings applications, plastics and glass. Um, also note that uh, we are recording this and concluding the presentation, you'll receive a link um, with this recording. Feel free to take a look at it at a later date, share it with colleagues or, or whatever you like. Um, also, uh, if you have any questions, please enter them in the Q&A box, or I'm sorry, the chat box located in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, and we'll get to them following the presentation. Uh, this is our office hours format. If you're unfamiliar, uh, it basically is a shortened presentation, maybe 20, 25 minutes, followed by open dialogue, questions, answers, um, whatever challenges you're facing in your own facilities, um, you know, whatever we can do to help uh, you, um, you know, move forward with your um, color and appearance programs. Um, so with that, let me introduce uh, Mr. Corey Cohen. Corey's our senior application specialist and will be your presenter today. So thanks for joining us and uh, keep those questions um, coming in the chat box. There you go, Corey. I think you got to everything so we can go ahead and get started. So today's office hours topic is transmission haze and clarity for coatings, applications, plastics, and glass, or whatever other clear material you may decide to measure with it. Uh, so transparency is the absorption and scattering behavior of a transparent product, and it will determine how objects are perceived through the product, okay? So this is for clear materials, and we're gonna be viewing objects on the other side. So that light needs to be able to pass through the clear material and get to our eyes and the quality of that material um, and the things it does to that light as it passes through are going to affect how we see things. So these types of measurements that we're gonna talk about today, these transparency measurements are important for anything you need to see something through. So that could be, uh, you know, packaging products. It could be the, you know, the, the cake uh, display, thing that you see at the grocery store and it needs to be clear so you can see the cake through it. It could be uh, glasses. Um, the military uses these to test the goggles that uh, you know, the soldiers are using in the field. Um, they're used on device screens. Uh, there are certain uh, large companies, I can't get specific, but there are um, some companies that actually uh, measure their screens with um, parts of their screens they typically have multiple layers so they they, they measure screen um, device screens with uh, this type of instrument so it's very very important for all these types of products um, that your material is uh, very clear um, or not clear um, as you may need and of course you need to be able to to measure those properties so that's what we're going to get into right now so visual perception as mentioned, um, so this is a little different from uh, pretty much every other instrument we um, we make, we make and sell, because uh, for all of our other instruments, the color instruments, the gloss, the, the wave scan for the surface structure, um, they're all reflectance measurements. So we're bouncing light off of the surface and then that reflected light is going into our eye and where um, we're seeing whatever happened to that reflected light. In this case, we're talking about light passing through an object. So here we have our sample, the clear material that we're seeing an object through, and that sample is going to affect the light as it passes through. So again, uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, what that material does to the light is going to affect how the observer sees it. Uh, so when light hits a clear or a transparent material, um, there is going to be reflection and there's going to be absorption. Um, absorption is just when the light gets absorbed um, by the material and uh, you know gets turned into heat, so that light basically goes away. Um, or that, uh, that light could reflect off the material. And typically, um, there's going to be two reflections for any clear material. There's going to be a reflection off of the front surface and a reflection off of the back surface. And so here, let me get my pointer out. Front surface, back surface there, I can gesture now. So um, 
so here we have a uh, homogeneous material. So this is a, a material um, that's the same throughout. Um, all of the par particles were uh, properly dispersed and are the same size. And so you can see that the, the front of the material, the back of the material is very smooth and inside it's not deviating the light too much. Um, but now we have a material with lots of internal scatterers and surface structures. Um, so now we're getting some scattering off of the different sizes of particles within the material. And we're also getting scattering as that light leaves the surface because the, um, the surface itself is rough. And so different parts of that light beam hitting different parts of that surface are going to be deflected at different angles. An influence on the uh, scattering properties of your material. Typically, uh, the smaller the particle size, the more evenly that material is going to scatter the light. And with uh, with larger particle sizes, as you see on the bottom, typically there's going to be less homogeneous scattering and more of sort of a cone of light, um, as you can see, so uh, sort of protruding out the right of this uh, example at the bottom. So when we analyze transparent materials, there are kind of two categories of analysis we do. Um, we look into how much wide angle scattering there is and how much narrow angle scattering there is. They're, so they're both uh, you know, deflecting the light, scattering the light, uh, you could say diffusing the light, um, but it's doing it uh, to different degrees. I, I guess diffusing, you would really only use that term with the wide angle scattering. Um, whereas the narrow angle scattering is just uh, slightly deflecting that light. And so that's going to have a different effect on the objects we see through that material, um, depending on whether the, uh, the scattering is, is to a wide angle or a narrow angle. And so here's a, a pretty good visual of uh, the different effects we get for wide angle scattering, um, which uh, is a measure of haze and narrow angle scattering, which is a measure of what we call clarity. So haze and clarity are slightly different things. They do refer to different properties of the material. Um, haze is wide angle scattering or uh, fusion. Clarity is narrow angle scattering. And so by looking at these images, we can see uh, sort of the effect that it has on our eyes on, on how we view objects through that material. So with haze, uh, typically, a hazy surface is going to cause a reduction in contrast. So the colors won't come through as crisply. Um, the light dark um, will be muted a little bit. So less contrast um, for haze. And then for clarity, you're going to get more of a fuzzing. So with, with haze, even though the contrast has decreased, um, you're still getting sort of crisp edges um, around those objects that we're seeing through that hazy material. But with the material um, with low clarity, uh, we are seeing a bit of fuzziness in that image. And we can also see that the quality of the image changes depending on the distance of the object from that clear material that we're seeing it through. So that, that uh, block that says U and T, the one that's closer to the clear material is a bit more clear, a bit more um, uh, uh, less fuzzy, um, I could say, and the the ones further out as you go back, those those blocks to the left um, look really really fuzzy. So with clarity, the um, the image you see is distance dependent, and with haze, it's much much less so. So we have total transmittance. Total transmittance is just a measure of the total amount of light that passes through the material as opposed to being uh, reflected or absorbed. Um, so total transmittance can be split into two categories, diffuse transmittance and direct transmittance. Now direct transmittance is the light that passes straight through the material without being scattered, without being deviated at all. Diffuse transmittance is the light that passes through the material but is deviated to all different angles. Right, And so um, again, we have two different sort of categories of scattering, uh, the wide angle scattering, which is related to that haze value, and the narrow angle scattering, which is related to the clarity value. 
So this is how those measurements actually work. Um, this is for the total transmittance measurement. So for total transmittance, you have uh, our light source coming in from the left. We have our sample in front of the entrance port to our, our sphere in the, uh, the haze guard instrument. And so what happens is the way this works when you calibrate this instrument, you calibrate it to open air. So you have a light beam passing through. There's no sample in place. So there's nothing but air between um, this port and the detector. So the light beam just hits the detector and the detector figures out how much light it's getting when there's nothing in place. All right. And so that's uh, that's 100 percent transmittance. So then you place the sample in, in place. Uh, the light beam passes through it. Again, that sample is going to absorb some light. It's going to reflect some light. And so it's going to reduce the amount of total light uh, that's passing through that sample and entering the sphere. Um, so this sphere, it's a white coated sphere. So it's made so that when the light hits it, whether it's direct transmittance, it's going straight through or diffuse transmittance, it's all bouncing around the inside of this white coated sphere and being captured by this sensor. Right. And so this is how total transmittance is measured. And it's given as a percentage uh, relative to the reading in open air. So open air is measured at 100 uh, percent. If your sample measures at, say, 70 percent, that means that 70 percent of the light um, is getting through as was getting through with open air. And that's total transmittance. Now, when we get to haze. Haze requires two different measurements. It requires a measure of the total transmittance. So that's going to be measured exactly the same way we just saw. But it also requires that uh, we measure specifically the diffuse transmittance. Now, remember that diffuse or total transmittance is uh, the sum of the diffuse transmittance plus the direct transmittance. Okay, Everything that passes straight through plus everything that, that uh, gets deviated um, the sum is the total transmittance. So in order to measure the diffuse transmittance, we need to eliminate that direct transmittance. And that's done uh, with an exit port. So when haze is being measured, uh, it first measures using that total transmittance principle. And then it opens up this light trap. So this light that passes straight through, this directly transmitted light, is eliminated from the measurement. It's only this diffused light um, that gets bounced around this, uh, again, this white coated sphere and into this sensor. And uh, that's how it measures the diffuse transmittance. Okay. And then haze is simply the ratio of the diffuse transmittance to the total transmittance. So it's the percentage of the total amount of light that passes through that is diffused. That's what the haze percentage is. And then you multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. Right. So if I say that uh, the haze is 20 percent for a particular sample, that means that of all the light passing through, 20 percent of that light is being diffused. And then we have the clarity measurement principle. Now, this is a bit different from both. Um, so for this setup, remember, we're only concerned with the narrow angle scattering. And so instead of, uh, you know, having that light bounce all around the, uh, you know, that coating to capture the diffuse uh, transmittance, we're only concerned with this narrowly transmitted light. And so we have two sensors for this type of measurement. This is only used for the clarity measurement. Uh, one is a center sensor and the other is a ring sensor. So the center sensor captures the light uh, that passes straight through that directly transmitted light. And that ring sensor captures the amount of light that is scattered to narrow angles. And then you plug that into this equation, the difference over the sum. And again, you multiply that by 100% to um, express the clarity value as a percentage. Now, note that when it comes to how clear a material is, uh, haze, the haze scale and the clarity scale are inverted. So a perfectly clear material, uh, meaning open air, if you were to measure open air, uh, haze should measure at 0% and clarity should measure at 100%. So as the scattering in the material increases, haze will go up and clarity will go down. So let's talk about the instrument itself. Uh, so for 20 years, uh, we had the 
Hayes Guard Plus uh, from 94 to 2014. Um, and it was such a solid instrument that we uh, we really saw no reason to improve it until uh, until that time in 2014. And really nowadays, the measurement principle is uh, pretty much the same with the new unit um, as it is with the old one. But we did make a number of technological improvements um, just as far as the um, longevity of the light source and the precision of the light source, as well as the um, you know, some of the electronics, it has a nice new color touch screen and all that. So we're gonna go over our, our new instrument just a little bit. Um, that would be the HazeGuard I. The R, the I stands for innovation, and no, I'm not kidding. Um, so the HazeGuard I is open and flexible. It has an open design for small and large specimens. Uh, this makes it much, much easier to use than some of the uh, uh, competitive instruments that are out there because most of those instruments require closed optics. It can't be accurate without you know, having a cover over the whole thing. So you have to set your sample in place, set the cover in place. It just takes a lot longer with those instruments. And so the open design um, is very, very convenient for taking samples, uh, taking measurements quickly. Um, there's no influence of ambient light. Uh, and we have a versatile sample holder for films and sheets. And that's what you're seeing here in this image to the bottom. Of the Sounded like something happened on his end. Um, you're back. Okay. All good over there? Pick up a little uh, cat dog skirmish. Oh, uh, that's, we're good that's now. fun. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, versatile sample holder for films and sheets. That's what you're seeing. This sort of goalpost shaped thing um, is fitted. So for like thin um, films um, and uh, even uh, hard materials like glass, as long as it's uh, somewhat rigid, this, um, this thin film holder could be used for it. Or the sample holder. This one's called the sample holder. We have a different one called the thin film holder, and that's what you're seeing here uh, at the bottom left here. So if you have um, very, very thin materials like cellophane, something that you um, would need to sort of stretch out um, so you, that you can get a good window for measurement, um, this is uh, uh, the thin film holder. Um, it's sort of a... Uh, if you're familiar with uh, what an embroidery hoop is, it's kind of two rings that you press uh, a cloth or, or something um, in between. It sort of stretches it tight. Um, so it's the same idea here. It's it's an accessory meant for uh, sort of presenting a good window for measurement. What else? What else? Oh, vertical setup. So yeah, with the um, previous generation, our HazeGuard Pluses could only be oriented horizontally. This one can actually be uh, oriented uh, both ways, horizontally or vertically. You can change back and forth if you want. And the benefit of that is that um, you could um, lay the sample down on the port instead of having to hold it in place vertically. Um, you can turn the um, the instrument, the entire instrument vertically. And this is particularly good when you have very small samples um, that are maybe just a little bit bigger than the aperture port uh, in the haze guard. Um, this is great because then you can just uh, sit the sample on the port instead of having to hold it in place and worry about that, you know, maybe your, your fingers are getting in place of the light beam or, or whatever. Uh, reliable and precise. Um, so this is the light source update uh, I referred to. This instrument, um, our older ones used a, a um, tungsten bulb, um, and we had methods for making sure the measurements were consistent over time. It's still tungsten is always going to, to degrade over time and need to be replaced eventually. Um, whereas with LEDs, they're very, very consistent. They're very, very long lasting. Um, and so it, uh, it makes it that much more precise. Um, and we actually guarantee our instrument, uh, or I'm sorry, the light source. The light source is guaranteed for 10 years. Uh, it has an automatic calibration and self-diagnosis, and it has a reference beam um, controlling the energy output of the LED. So that light beam that's passed through the samples in order to, uh, to take those measurements, 
uh, that light beam is actually split um, into two equal light beams. One is directed straight down, and that's measured um, there just as a reference to make sure that the, the light beam, um, the output is as it should be so that your measurements are always accurate. Excellent inter-instrument agreement. Um, so just real quick, I always like to define these terms super quick. Uh, repeatability is how closely an instrument will measure a single sample. Um, when you measure the same sample repeatedly, how close can you expect uh, those readings to be? Um, an inter-instrument agreement is when you read the same sample using different instruments uh, and you're trying to see how well those the readings from the different instruments agree with each other. Um, and of course, both of those metrics are very, very tight, very precise for the Hayes Guard eye. A new color touch screen, um, which is great. So it's a bit easier to use than the, uh, the older one with the, the screen uh, from 1994. Um, you can measure haze and transmittance according to international standards, uh, ASTM D1003 using both aluminance C and A, uh, and then ISO 13468 using aluminate D65. So in previous models, these were three different units. Uh, you had to get one if you were doing ASTM uh, with aluminate C, you had to get a different one if you're using ASTM with aluminate A, uh, and a third one, uh, a third model could do the ISO method with aluminate D65. Uh, the current model does all three in one. Uh, it does come with our smart chart software, specifically the smart lab module for the Hayes Guard. Um, so you can use that to either transfer, uh, you can transfer data back and forth uh, between the software and instrument, either using a USB stick, uh, or you can actually plug it in directly. Um, you can plug it in with a, uh, a USB cord, plug your, your computer into the Hayes Guard. Uh, you can actually measure in online mode, so you can you know, uh, on your computer, you can name the sample and do all the settings and then just uh, hit measure and the instrument automatically sends the reading over to the software. Uh, you can even measure liquids with this instrument. If you need to know the haze of your liquids, we have a, a special cuvette table and a variety of cuvettes. Uh, for measuring liquids, and they have different path lengths, which means um, the amount of, of uh, uh, liquid that the light has to pass through um, on its way into the haze port. So um, it, it's just the, the width of the liquid in, in that cuvette. Two and a half, five, ten, and 20 millimeters can be chosen. Another popular test to do in conjunction with this instrument is uh, the Tabor abrasion test. Uh, so that's when you take your rigid, clear material, and um, there's a, a Tabor machine that sort of rolls these, uh, I think they're like stone-like wheels um, over the surface, um, and that abrades it, it roughs it up. Um, and then you measure, you would measure um, the haze and transmittance before and then after the abrading to see what the change is. And so by that, you can use the, um, the haze readings on the haze guard as a metric for how abrasion resistant your material is. Uh, this is just an example of a test done um, with the Tabor abrasion, two different types of plastic. Oh, and that's it. Uh, let's, uh, let's answer some questions, John. Cat and dog, everyone okay over there? Uh, they're all good. They've they've gone to their separate corners. Okay, um, good. <laughs> they, they, they've agreed to hold off until after the webinar, so we'll we'll get okay, to that. Okay, good. Uh, good deal. All right, a couple questions from Jack here. His first one is uh, change in clarity similar to change in MTF. Can you elaborate on what MTF is? Let me see. Jack, I'm going to unmute you here if that's all right. And then you can uh, unmute yourself on your end. If you don't mind elaborating, sir.
Jack, the uh, unmute button should be in your upper right. A uh, little round circle should be red okay. with a microphone in it. Did that work? Ah, there you are. Okay. How are you, sir? Um, good, thank you. Um, so I noticed when you were going over clarity, it looked like uh, very similar to the modular transfer function of um, of a lens. So I was curious if it was similar, uh, so, sort of like a similar measurement, a change in the um, um, what's what's another word? Apologies, I can't think of the <laughs> of the other term right now. Um, No worries. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with that term, actually. Um, it, it, oh, um, so M MTF. Sorry, I just remembered. MTF is the like the ability of like uh, an imaging system or a lens to recreate the image scene as it passes through. Uh, so that that that's basically the the the, lay, the layman description for it. But okay. um, but it. it yeah, I know. I noticed that they were very similar in in equation wise, and so I was wondering if are they similar? Is it sort of like the same? I'm sure clarity measurement would be an indicator of that. Um, do you know how that would typically be measured? Um, <laughs> sorry, not at the top of my head. Um, my guess would be they're projecting some sort of image, uh, maybe some some sort of lines that they're projecting through it, and and you know measuring it to see something. You know, if the lines are are distinct in the image, um, it's actually similar to an old tensiometer. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it seems like it could be closely related. Um, uh, definitely having low clarity would affect the image forming qualities of a lens. Um, and there are lens makers that do use the haze guard. I don't know if that's, uh, you know, specifically what they're looking for, that MTF um, uh, okay. measurement or, or whatever. Um, but, yeah, it, it is used for lenses, so it, it could certainly be related. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mike Peters. Mike is our... Um field salesperson up in Canada, and he just sent an article to both Corey and I, um, MTF is modulation transfer function. It's a measurement of the optical performance potential of a lens. So um, we'll, we'll look into that. That's a, that was a good, good question there, Jack. Um, it, while we got you on the line too, you care to ask your second question here? People get sick uh, of hearing from me. <laughs> sure. Um, so my other question was, I noticed that the haze guard, you said that was a good intra, intra instrument measurement device. Um, and you also said that it uses an LED as a light source. I was curious, the LEDs, um, they don't tend to be broadband, or at least I don't know if they are broadband uh, in, in, in terms of their spectrum. Would that affect trying to compare it to, say, a, a, another device that, that does have a halogen lens? Or bulb, sorry. So uh, white LEDs have actually come a long way. Um, it used to be true that in order to um, create a white LED, it would usually just be like, um, you know, uh, spikes of color in very specific areas, and not full spectrum. Um, but yeah, they've come a long way. The, the white LEDs we use are full spectrum. We actually have white LEDs in our um, uh, one of our new uh, color instruments. Um, which is, I, I think this is uh, the first time a white LED has been used in that type of instrument. Um, and uh, yeah, it's because of those advancements that do um, give it, uh, you know, uh, full, it, it gives it power across the entire spectrum. Um, so it is full spectrum and then it's modulated um, by the detector response to match either a luminant A, C, or D65, depending on the defined method. So the standard test methods that these instruments are meant to conform to, um, they call out those things like the illuminant. And so anyone uh, building an instrument that claims to follow that method would need to use those illuminants. And so you could expect that the results ostensibly would be similar. Um, I think, uh, you know, part of 
the reason um, the haze guard has been so popular over so many years is because of its its consistency and accuracy. So I, I definitely don't want to say that those other instruments are going to get the same readings as ours, um, but they would have to. Um, yes, we all have to conform to the correct illuminant for the um, the proper test method. Okay. Uh, can I ask just one little follow up question to that? Certainly. Sure. Uh, so the the uh, the instrument. Does it just give percentage data, or does it also can it also give an actual spectrum? It cannot. So yeah, it just gives the percentages. Um, it's just measuring the total. The, the the light is modulated properly for the two degree observer, the y function. You know all that stuff that's specified in the the test method. Um, but it is only measuring the total amount of light. Um, so in order to um, differentiate wavelength by wavelength, that's actually a spectrophotometer. So you need a right. transmission spectrophotometer for that. Got it. Thank you. OK. Thanks for your questions. Uh, another question here uh, from Shabazz. Let's see. It is, is, and I think he's referring to the Hayes Guard Eye. Uh, is the same model with vertical setup uh, is it the same as the horizontal or are both models separate? Uh, nope, it's the same model. You can put it in both positions. There's, there's currently only one model of HazeGuard I. Well, no, I take that back. There is a pro version. Um, but um, yeah, for the most part, there's, there's just the one model because it can do everything. Sounds good. Um, if anyone has any other questions too, please uh, enter them in the chat and we'll, we'll get to them. Um, Corey, when you get... Uh, into someone um, looking at transmission haze and, and clarity. What are some of the key questions that you get frequently um, that a lot of folks ask? So one that I've been getting, um, I've gotten it several times recently, is people want to measure opacity with the haze guard. Mm. Um, the, the idea being that if you take the transmittance value, which is the amount of light that the, the percentage of light that passes through the sample, you could subtract that from 100 to get the opacity. So if the transmittance is 20%, the opacity would be 80%. Now that's not a bad way to um, get some internal measurements. If, if you, it needs to be expressed in opacity, you can get something close to opacity by doing it that way. But opacity is an actual scale. It's you know, defined in standard test methods. Um, what's the one? ASTM D2805 for hiding power. Um, and they re require a reflectance instrument. So in order to specifically measure the actual opacity scale, if, you know, someone specifies you need to report the opacity scale, that must be measured with a reflectance spectrophotometer or reflectance instrument. Um, so you know, one minus uh, 100 minus the transmittance value. If you have a haze garden, you need to get that metric. Um, that would be good for internal use. It's just not specifically opacity. It's not technically the opacity scale. So I just want to make that clear. Okay, that's a good point. Um, you also mentioned um, uh, this comes with Smart Chart, the software, and that's also used, I know, by several several other of our devices too. It's got to be you know, a huge benefit to have all that data collection in one place for outputting reports, correct? Sure, yeah, um, of course, yeah. So all of our, um, well, most of our, our major color and appearance instruments, our spectros and gloss meters and wave scan, uh, and the haze guard, they all have different modules within our uh, umbrella software smart chart. And so you kind of get all of the uh, readings from your different instruments in the same format. You can uh, output it into the same type of report, um, which has some really great reporting functions for um, if you need to submit QC reports. Uh, you can you know, put your own logo on it, um, customize pretty much everything. So you can produce um, consistent reports across all your different types of measurements. Uh, you can you know, store the readings uh, in a database. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, definitely convenient to have all that in one place. Definitely. Um, other questions? Quiet group here today. Cat dog still good? <laughs> um, 
we have a few members from the field on. Um, do any of you guys uh, get any frequent questions or anything to add to the, to the discussion that could help some of our listeners? You'll have to unmute yourselves. Quiet field team today too, Corey. Quiet. Has that word ever been used to describe them? No, no, it hasn't. <laughs> um, what are there other, um, you know, frequently asked questions or, or common challenges people have um, when they're getting into the haze guard? Does that make sense, Corey? What's that? Um, are, are there common uh, challenges people have kind of ramping up once they're getting into measuring um, transmission haze and clarity? Um, or is it a pretty pretty quick ramp up and they're off and running? Yeah, I mean it's it's a big instrument, John. So it's it's easy to use and they can they can get <laughs> off and run. No, but seriously, um, it is it is. Pretty. I mean, the thing only does three types of measurements, so it's, um, you know, the the setup and use is a, a bit simpler than some of our other, you know, our color instruments that you can see color values in a million different ways. Um, Haze guard just measures the three values, so yeah, it's it's pretty easy to use, pretty easy to set up. Um, as far as just taking measurements, um, if you are going to be regularly taking measurements. Um, yeah, if you're regularly going to be taking measurements of the same type of material, um, definitely consider one of these accessories for ease of use because it can be taxing to um, hold it, you know, perfectly in place during the measurement, which is usually how I take my measurements. But, um, you know, if, if you're doing the same repeated measurements every time, it's definitely worth getting one of these sample holders, um, either the thin film holder or this... Uh, um, sample holder for more uh, rigid materials. Um, but if you do do it um, by hand, just uh, when you hold your your film or clear material up to the aperture, just make sure that your, your fingers are not going to get in the way of the light beam. Um, and also try to avoid as much as possible touching the material with your clear, um, with your bare hands because of course any smudges, you know, the oils on our, our hands are going to affect the um the clarity and the transmittance of the, the material okay um can it read both iso and astm methods at the same time well yes it can okay i like the ease of use too but i don't know if it passed my my mom test john's mom could use it <laughs> <laughs> we can use that for our next marketing campaign um Got another question here too uh, from Nina. Sorry, I joined late and this might not be relevant, but I'm curious if there's a color component that can be estimated using the haze guard, like a blue yellow tone of clears. Uh, no, there is no color data you can get um, from the haze guard. It, it uh, you would need a transmission spectrophotometer for that. Okay. Okay. Um, another question in here. Uh, can you? talk about the differences between the standard and the pro versions. Um, are there differences in precision, um, specifically a very transparent material? Yes, so the pro is specifically designed for very, very clear materials. It's um, really at the very, very low haze range um, that you're gonna see that benefit. So if you have like a really super clear material with with really really tight tolerancing, um, and again I'm I'm thinking of uh, those device screens uh, and things like that, um, then uh, yes the pro might be beneficial because it has better um, better precision, better reproducibility I believe in the very very I, I think it's something like uh, point. 0.1% haze uh, repeatability as opposed to, or no, is that our standard? I don't know. Uh, McDonald, are you on the line? Can you comment on this? Zero. There you are, Jim. 
three or um, it's it's extremely accurate at the very very limits of, of haze and so it uh, it's an instrument that needs to be covered and and uh, protected from any ambient light sources and, and things of that nature there's not too many applications for it but more and more in the world of um, display screens like Corey said if you're if you're working in those um, types of industries <clears throat> where the, the haze is really really minimal and you need to have an accurate representation of it then the haze guard pro is an instrument to consider thanks jim i have a field person chiming in like solar power hmm. typically the um standard haze guard eye is used for solar okay. applications okay cool thank you um also note too we are running a um uh obsolescence program here if you have an older model haze guard you're able to um, upgrade um, at a bit of a discount you can take a look at bic byk hyphen instruments.com and i think it's slash promotions uh, we can put that in the chat here um but you can take a look at that if, if you're interested there or if uh, um, you're, you're looking to upgrade to the newer model. So what other questions here? Uh, I think we've gotten through everything in from what I can see. Um, Jim, while you're on the line, are, are there you know frequently uh, frequent comments or, or challenges um, you hear from your side of the fence? I've been working with customers with the Haze Guard for 25 years. It's an extremely uh, accurate, durable, um, really well-made instrument. Um, if you're looking to meet, you know, the standard specifications in the film and glass and and uh, other similar uh, industries packaging, and that um, it, it's really the go-to standard and the in, the, in an excellent choice for, for getting these measurements. They last a very, very long time. We have a lot of these instruments that have been out in the field for um, for years and years. Um, it's a very simple instrument to use, quite frankly, um, but there are some um, tricks and tactics to be sure that you present the sample to the aperture and the port uh, the same way every time. Corey has on the screen now some of our custom holders and, 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 and some of our customers make their own uh, specific holders that, that uh, work better for their products specifically. And so uh, it's adaptable in that way uh, in that you can make your own fixture and attach it to the, to the sliding um, portion of the bottom uh, to, 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 to get a good fixture for your product. It's very adaptable in that way. Um, I can't think of anything else to add. It's, it's really uh, a quite simple instrument to use, and it, 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 it gives you uh, only three readings, transmission, haze, and clarity, but it gives uh, you know the most accurate um, picture of those than anything else on the market. So it's, a, it's, a, it's been a good instrument uh, for Bic Gardner and a good instrument for these industries uh, for many, many years. So uh, we certainly have experts in the field that can help with individual applications if, uh, if, you, if you'd like uh, <clears throat> that, that assistance. Thanks. Um, and that, that lady, and gentlemen, uh, that was Jim McDonald. He's our business line manager for our user groups, user markets. Um, and he's been with the company a long time. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't mention the years, but uh, yeah, you've been around a while. <laughs> So thank you. Um, other questions or, or comments? We have a little bit of time left here. Um, as I mentioned, um, as soon as we stop this, um, you'll, you'll get an automated email with the, the link to this recording, including this discussion. Um, you might want to focus on the, the dog and cat fight. That's kind of entertaining. Um, a question here, uh, is there an option for a loaner units for evaluation? I'd say on a case by case basis. Um, so yeah, contact us about that. Uh, we can talk about your application and, and uh, see what we can do. Yeah, we, we prefer to have you send. It's it's 
a little difficult to ship these things around all the time. Um, we prefer to have you send samples to me if possible, so I can take some measurements and we can discuss the results. Um, but if you absolutely need to see it um, before you can you know, make a decision, um, we, we might be able to set something up. So definitely reach out to us. Yeah. On, on the last slide, Corey, do you have your email address there? I do. There you go, right at the bottom. Um, Corey.cohen at altana.com. Um, feel free, to, you know, to email him directly, and uh, you know, with any questions or if something comes up, you know, later today or later this week or next week or next month, um, give Corey a shout. Um, and as he mentioned, you know, if you'd like him to run some samples and look at some data with you, um, just get in touch with him, and, and he'll pull in the, your regional sales. Uh, field person and um, we'll come up with a solution, do some testing for you. Um, so that that's pretty cool that we offer that. Um, questions, comments before we close here. Uh, we, we, we try and do these office hours every um, month at least, um, you know, interspersed between our, our normal, usually 45 minute long presentations. I think we have one on our smart chart uh, reporting. That's our software piece. I think that's next week. So um, stay tuned for future um, invitations to um, learning opportunities from BitGardener. And as always, feel free to reply back to any of the marketing messages you get. Um, we'll get them in the marketing team and can forward them to the appropriate um, technical people. Um, or you can email Corey, his, his email's on the screen. But with that, I think we will conclude then. Um, I appreciate everyone joining us and uh, we look forward to seeing you on future BitGardener web seminars. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone.